Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about a TV show that I've been watching. It's called Mr. Robot. Now, I caught season one last year, uh, and I've been watching season two, which is about half over now. Now, it's a, it's a show that's it's essentially about hacking, but it's not the typical hacking that you see in Hollywood. It's not Hollywood hacking. It's not what you see in the movies like Hackers and so on. No, what we've got is something where the producers, the, show, the, the, the makers of the show have done their homework. You're seeing things like proper social engineering. You're seeing things like proper computer screens. You're not just seeing uh, uh, a, a status screen come up that says hacking so-and-so with a progress bar. Uh, they're showing people typing away, trying things, trying to log in a few times. They're showing, doing research on the victims. They're showing uh, competent network security practices that have to be worked around. They're showing real exploits being used to do things. Uh, if you look carefully at some of the freeze frames, and, and they're they're showing. Uh, practices like backups in multiple locations and air-gapped backups where you don't actually have a network path from the outside to the backups. They're showing all of this type of thing. And they're showing plausible ways to get around these. And they're doing this all on a slice-of-life backdrop where you see what's going on with the characters that are directly involved in this on, on both the uh, victim side and the perpetrator side. And note that I'm not using good guys and bad guys here because it's not clear who the actual bad guys are and who the actual good guys are. There are some characters that are basically definitely good and there are some characters that are basically definitely evil. But for the most part, it's, it's a collision of shades of gray. And that actually makes the, the, the story even more compelling because not only do you have that esoteric um, hacking stuff going on in the background, you've got the primary protagonist, Elliot, uh, who has clear mental issues. And uh, this isn't spoiling anything by saying that. Is, uh, right off the bat in the first episode, he starts out talking to the viewer as though they're a character in his world. In other words, he's talking to us, and he laments uh, more than once that we never say anything, uh, uh, but uh, he still talks to us nonetheless. So anytime you're hearing some sort of a narration going on, he's actually talking mentally to us, the viewer. So you know there's something going on with his mind, and he also he perceives the major antagonist uh, corporation, E Corp, as Evil Corp, and we find out why over the course of the series. But uh, he's actually hacked his own perception so that he sees Evil Corp anytime the E Corp logo shows up, and. We actually see that on screen. So what we're seeing from uh, Elliot's perspective always shows what he sees, his perception. It doesn't show objective reality. And that's, that's a significant departure from the way most uh, shows and movies and so on do their cinematography. Unless they're doing a full point of view shot, they don't they tend to stick with objective reality or at least something approaching objective reality on mr robot the point of view character informs what the third third person point of view shots actually see so when elliot's the point of view character even though he's in frame we're seeing things as he would perceive them when other characters are in frame and Elliot isn't, we're seeing things from their point of view, the way they perceive things, which will tend to match objective reality much more closely than what Elliot perceives, because these people presumably do not have mental disorders. 
and that they haven't screwed up with screwed with their own perceptions. Now, watching season one, it gets off to a really slow start, or it feels slow. There's a lot of narration. There's a lot of um, sedate action, uh, so to speak. There's a lot of Elliot explaining what he's doing and how and why. And there's a lot of characters having awkward interactions. There's, and, and now here's the thing. You'll see real feeling conversations where... Uh, the characters will say something and there'll be an awkward pause. Uh, there'll be points where you see the characters sitting there not knowing what to say and they'll say nothing. And the cinematography is uh, different as well. Uh, you'll have empty fr shots, essentially. Uh, you'll have... Um, you'll have no incidental background soundtrack in a lot of cases. You'll have... Uh, it's actually odd enough that you notice it. It's little things, but it all goes to set the tone nicely. Now, the thing is, this has actually continued past the first season and the big, massive reveals, and I, I did say reveals plural, over the course of the first season. There are massive reveals there that I won't spoil here. But this subtle cinema, cinematography technique continues. And even uh, the show itself doesn't have an opening title sequence. Uh, what happens is you'll get some action going on and then the title will be superimposed on some, whatever happens to be on screen at a convenient moment. It's actually brilliantly done, and it, if you actually pay attention to the show, it, it will probably suck you in. And that's the thing. It's not a show that you can watch casually. You have to actually actively watch it. You have to pay attention. I would uh, kind of describe it as sort of a psycho-techno-thriller type show. Uh, but you never know quite what you, you'll get. As a matter of fact, the show itself uh, reminds me, now that I think about it, a lot of uh, some uh, rather out there anime like uh, Technolize for General Tone or uh, Paranoia Agent for uh, uh, messing with the viewer's perceptions. and messing with what appears to be objective reality. It's... In fact, uh, Mr. Robot would, would work perfectly as an anime, now that I think about it. I'd be interested to see what an anime adaptation would look like, uh, now you'll come to think of it. But I don't think such a thing is necessary, given that they've done so well with the live-action show. The, and it has uh, some substantial things going for it. Uh, the production quality is brilliant. The producers have done their homework. The hacking scenes, you, you'll see uh, screens that are only in shot for a quarter second. They'll have actually taken time to build a screen that's plausible. They'll have, they've taken time to research procedures for doing things. Uh, they, they're showing real computer screens in a lot of cases. Uh, in the most recent episode, they showed a real distribution of Linux booting off of a, a USB drive. They, they showed a lot of, of things like that. And that's on top of the generally accurate hacking that they do, or generally overall accurate. Specific details might be sketchy. And you can write that off as uh, a dramatic license or uh, storytelling expediency. Uh, so that you didn't have to waste another 10 minutes of screen time getting something to work or something like that. You know, do a little bit of magic and just say, okay, and this, we did some magic with this thing and now we run this program and it works. So it's a, all quite uh, reasonable. And 
Uh, on top of that, all of the primary cast are absolutely brilliant in their roles. In particular, the lead actor, um, I can't remember his name now, uh, but he does brilliantly as Elliot. And Christian Slater as uh, Mr. Robot, the, uh, the guy that recruits Elliot to F Society. And that's not spoiling anything, really, uh, because you find that out basically in episode one. Um, maybe episode two, I can't remember. But it's not spoiling anything. Uh, enough, nothing integral to the plot. So those two, Christian Slater and, this, and the lead actor guy, uh, Rami Malek? Something like that. Uh, they do brilliantly. They have the chemistry on screen to make it work. And the other characters, the supporting characters, which start to take on a stronger per presence over the course of the first season and into the second, they're portrayed brilliantly as well. The, the whole cast does amazingly at everything they're given is even with it, no matter how out there it is, th they pull it off. Like the most recent episode had a real mind screw at the beginning of it. Uh, and the best cameo in the history of cameos. I won't spoil those, but the actors were given something so far different to what they've done so far in the series that it's amazingly Amazing how well they pulled it off. And this speaks well of the showrunners the, 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 and the people who did the casting as well and the directors, all of that. It's put together so perfectly. This mind screw at the beginning of the most recent episode. And that actually illustrates the overall quality of the whole production. And it's amazing that something on cable television could manage to do something so well. Now, it does help that they don't necessarily need a huge budget to do what they do with this particular show. They don't necessarily have a lot of expensive effects. The, most of what they're doing is compositing and putting computer screens up on the screen and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and possibly background stuff to uh, do the cityscape and so on. But anyway, uh, what I'm basically what I'm saying is that it's a really good show if you can deal with the psychological thriller aspect of it. And it doesn't pull its punches on anything it deals with. Uh, drug dealing, uh, shady dealings of any kind, murder, all of that stuff is dealt with straight up. And that is refreshing, I, I think. Uh, and even the characters that seem like they're basically sane, that don't have mental issues, are not perfect people. They have issues. They have motivations. All of that. There's, there's backstory for all of the characters, including the apparent villain characters. They actually have depth to them. Anyway, uh, as you can guess from what I've said so far, uh, my basic, uh, basic recommendation is it's well worth a watch. Uh, if you have to pay for it on uh, DVD or Blu-ray or something like that, it's worth the money. I don't know what they're charging for Blu-rays or DVDs of Mr. Robot, but it's worth it. As long as it's in, in the... Uh, it doesn't get up into the mid to high three digits, uh, but it'd be worth $100 a season. It's that good. And it might be worth even a little more than that to have director's cuts to see what scenes they cut for time in the first season. I noticed the second season, the episodes tend to run about uh, 65 to 75 minutes. So it tells me that they probably had some stuff cut for time in the first season. It'd be interesting to see what that, that stuff was. Anyway, it's well worth a watch. 
And up to this point, uh, midway through the second season, there hasn't been any substantially disappointing moments where you feel like you've been cheated when a payoff comes. And given the history of the show at the end of season one, I can honestly say I do not believe we will be disappointed with the payoff at the end of season two in about five weeks, I think it will be. So give the show a watch. Give it a fair shot. Don't give up after 10 minutes of the first episode. Watch the first episode through and give the second episode a fair shot before you, uh, before you dump it as something that you can't, can't sit through, you're, you can't, can't follow. Remember, you're not supposed to understand everything that's going on in the first few episodes. You don't have enough information. Even Elliot doesn't understand what's going on at that point, and he's your only point of view character at that point. So remember, the first few episodes, you're not going to know what's going on. That's not a failure of the show. It's intentional. You will become more and more aware of what's going on as Elliot figures it out himself. So give the show a fair shot. When you do, watch it actively. Pay attention. And if you have to, rewind bits so you actually get what happened. Uh, it's, it's one of those shows. The details are there. And I can't recall any substantial errors that they've made either. So... You can assume that anything you see is probably there intentionally. And go with it. Anyway, that's a, a enough on Mr. Robot. Uh, I think I pretty much got my point across. It's uh, well worth a watch. And I'm actually looking forward to future seasons of it. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to have a season three. I haven't checked. Uh, uh, but given where it's going, uh, I, I can't see them canceling it. It's, it's that good. So uh, maybe I'll be back in, in a year or, or more with uh, a review of more of it. Uh, with, maybe I'll have a different opinion, but I don't think I will. I think the producers will keep the, keep the quality there. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.